Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice here for Group D. And we are almost at the conclusion of our group here, as we do already know our three players that will be advancing out of this. I'm joined at the analysis desk here by Rotterdam and Tasteless. And um, before I chat with you guys a little bit, I think we're going to get a look at the standings as to how things have played out here in Group D so far and who will be advancing forward. So in just a few moments, we'll be able to have a look at those. But overall, the three players that will be advancing are Innovation, Gumiho, and Dark. That is confirmed now. We are just waiting for seedings. Is there any surprises for you guys there? I think the first two are not a surprise, but Gumiho wasn't confirmed. You know, It wasn't at the mm. beginning of the day that everybody looked at this group and said, I think Gumiho is going to do really well. I think he's going to beat Innovation. I think he right. absolutely will finish top three. So. Calling it a surprise is not totally fair, but it could have been Showtime, it could have maybe been Yuturmo, or in the bizarre case, it could have been Mana. I think also th the real surprise is just how good Gumiho looks today. Yes, yes. Uh, he's playing the best games of his entire career. I've been casting this guy for like six years or something now, and, and this is him at his very, very best. Yeah, looking good there against Innovation for sure. As you can see, uh, the standings as they look right now with our three Korean players at the very, very top. And that means we do have six Terrans that are gonna be moving through into the round of 12. So a lot of Terran power here at the moment. Mm -hmm. For the people at home who are looking at this graphic and say, how can it be sure already? I mean, Uturmal's 2-2, two and two, he could end 3-2. and two. Even if Uturmal wins his final series 2-0 against Innovation, good luck with that, by the way, uh, even then it wouldn't be enough because yep. his map score would still be worse than the other finishers that have 3-2, and two, so it truly does not matter. Yeah, so, uh, and now that brings us neatly on to the next match that we're going to actually have here on the mainstream. Uh, it's going to be Dark versus Shota. Uh, and for Showtime, unfortunately, his road has sort of come to an end in terms of him being able to push on in towards the brackets. But for Dark, this match is still quite important. He does want as many wins under his belt, um, preferably a 2-0 from his side, so that he can bump up it a little bit in terms of those uh, in terms of those map scores. So for Dark, is this is this as cut and dry as anything? Is he going in as a very clear winner, or is Showtime still going to be somebody who can rumble things up? I want to say something fancy, but I think, yeah, he's kind of going in as probably the clear winner. I, I don't know, though. I mean, we'll have to see what else uh, Showtime has to show us. What do you think, Ruddy? Uh, I definitely think that Dark is the favorite here, especially because Showtime just had a very frustrating, rough day. There's no other way to put it. It's been yeah. multiple throws in his last series against Uturmo. He should have absolutely won it in game one. There was a point where he was up 40 supply, he was up in workers. Obviously, we had the series against Gumi Hill where he was up 1 0 and he should have won. Yeah. Uh, I do not think that. Even Showtime, who normally is pretty rock solid and nothing truly phases him, I think even he is a little mentally broken right now. I think Dark is just going to do his thing. He's going to play. If Dark wins 2-0 and something really weird happens in the other games, there is a small chance he finishes first in the group, which obviously is a big deal, because that means you get automatically seeded into the quarterfinals. But I don't really think that's going to happen either. So yeah. this is just kind of a best of three. It's for us. It's for the fans. There is $100 on the line. That's important True. to mention. Yeah. But yeah, I do see Dark as a favorite here. I mean, Showtime overall, his PVZ is very good. I mean, in the qualifiers on the way through, he did defeat Serral and Nurcio on the way here. He hasn't really had many Zerg tests. In fact, in his group, there's, there's only Dark there to put him to the test. So he can pull out good games. Yeah, he certainly can. I think the problem with Dark is he's the quintessential Zerg God. Mm -hmm. He's the guy where, this is the example I always use when you have a, a Zerg player who's just so good, yeah. is you don't get to leave your base. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you, you get out a little bit and everything comes in there and kills you and you go, shame on you. <laughs> you left your base against a Zerg that's that good. Um, so this is going to be a really big challenge for Showtime, but um, it's going to be tough. Yeah. And then moving forwards, you know, considering the three players that have come out of this group, mm -hmm. looking at them going into the brackets then in the future, I think not. It's funny because we see we think about innovation and dark always having really good chances, mm -hmm. but now has Gumiho proved himself to the point where he oh. has great chances in this tournament as well? I absolutely think so. Uh, with the way that he played TVT, I mean, there's multiple Terrans in the next yeah. phase. He could potentially run into a Ryong or he could be running into Beyond, maybe even alive down the road, alive already in the quarterfinals, obviously. But if you play TVT like that against innovation, yeah. why wouldn't you be able to do it again? So yeah. I absolutely think that Gumiho is a name that you have to respect and have to keep an eye on. You know, one thing to keep in mind is that sometimes in some tournaments there is one matchup that's kind of the most important mm -hmm. that makes sense and I think 
in this Intel Extreme Masters, it's Terran versus Terran. So there's something like that yeah. to keep in mind. We got a lot of good Terran players yes. here, and seeing TBT like a uh, like Gumihose is, is scary. Yeah, I like that point. I mean, we still look at the big favorites for this tournament, probably Innovation first, and then maybe Beyond, and maybe to some degree TY, but maybe we should really start thinking about Alive, maybe we should start thinking about Ryong, and maybe we should start yeah. thinking about Gumio as the favorites, because yeah. when it comes to TVT, these guys obviously know that Terran versus Terran, so yeah, maybe this tournament will change up a little bit. Yeah, depending on how that actually plays out towards yeah. the semifinals, we could see an entire TVT lineup with how good these guys are right yeah. now. And I wouldn't, you know, some people out there would be like, oh no, only ma mirror matchups. But the way these guys are making TBT look right now is mind-blowingly phenomenal. But it could also be the other way around. Imagine a world where Gumio and Ryong just take out like Beyond and Innovation. Yeah. And Stats and Dark are like, cheers, love. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. See you in the semis. And then suddenly we have a PvZ final. You know, that's possible as well. Yeah, it definitely is, definitely is. Uh, I'm just waiting now to get confirmation on when our next series is ready uh, and with the casters are ready as well. Uh, so just taking a few more minutes uh, to get good to go here. So overall, I mean, what's been your highlight really from the day? Have there, have there anything been really stand out for you guys? I mean, this has been such a fun event, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think the games have been good. The casting has been a lot of fun. You've, uh, been, we, you've been we've particularly been, good. <laughs> well, shucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even think that um, we've had, like, even, like, that last little cool play where we had the uh, Cyclone bounce twice. Yeah. Um, everything's been super fun. So uh, I'm just excited to see who's actually going to come out on top. So not one real highlight for me, and I'm sorry to give you kind of a non-answer there, but overall this tournament's been really sick. <laughs> How about you, Roddy? Yeah, a lot of highlights for sure. My personal highlight though is probably, I think it's very nice Nurture made it out. I think mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah. for the Polish fans. Really gives us something to look forward to, yeah. but how can the highlight not be Cero, though? I mean, the young kid coming on with, I think, a lot of pressure on his shoulders, even though maybe the community didn't necessarily expect that much, but all the other pros, they kept saying it's Cero, 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 Cero's the new kid on the block. He really is the best right now. And then showing up and delivering, yeah, hats off, kudos. I find that very impressive on such a young age. Yeah, definitely. I remember casting him in WCS 2015 uh, and watching him in our studios in Cologne, just having amazing performances in the round of 32 and then moving on forwards. And it was kind of like a real eye-opener uh, to see this kind of young kid who actually does have an older brother in Protosser who used to play a lot, yep. a lot. Uh, and Cyril was just the, you know, the baby kid or everything. But he surpassed his brother and then surpassed almost everybody on the non-Korean scene. You know, that happened before four in the Finnish scene, which is very funny. Uh, once upon a time, there was a Swedish player called Kona, and he had a little brother called Nama. Uh -huh. and obviously, uh -huh. Nama became the bigger player. It's yeah. really cool how that happened twice in the, the, the Finnish scene. But yeah, that's an awesome story. Protoss is definitely a good Zerg for yeah. European standards. Had his little successes here and there, you know, a Dream Act run, and maybe an online cup win here and there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, look at Saro now. He must be really proud. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. And I think even I remember a time when his family would travel with him because Protosser and Cyril, or sort oh, of no, Cyril especially, was, was so young that his entire family would travel with him to DreamHacks, I think it was, because it was so close. Uh, that they, um, you know, it was a, it was a tight bond. <laughs> a whole eSports family, that, That's so cool uh, to, to hear something like that. Yeah. But having some of these players coming out here uh, who are newer, who are fresher, it's a good reminder that it's not always going to be the same people yeah, in yeah. StarCraft too. We've always seen this in RTS, new people coming along uh, and doing really well. And it, it, it's something that's wonderful to see. The pantheon of nerd gods change. <laughs> Would you say it's not too late yet? It's not too late. <laughs> it's not too late, man. Is, is it too late yet to get into StarCraft 2? No, guys, it's no. not. Stop. Still it's, new it's, kids. It's, oh. If you look at the StarCraft franchise, it's been around and stable in uh, esports yeah. for so long. Yes. Absolutely not. You can start up any time. Why is that threat made every week on Reddit? It's too late, guys. <laughs> I feel like it's on purpose now. The, the, these people can't possibly be serious. It's like, I mean, I like it as well. Like the other guy is like, <laughs> is it too late to still be playing? It's like, no, it's also yeah. not. You know, yeah. just have fun. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. As I believe I'm getting word now that we are ready to greet our players to the stage. So Smix, take it away. Thank you very much, Calaris. Group D has had so many amazing matches and now we are down to our final match. Though one of these players is out, this WCS Spring Champion still deserves all your support as he goes up against a world-class Zerg player and SSL champion. For our last match, it's Showtime versus Dark. <laughs> Alright, 
right, guys, welcome back. We've got ourselves our final game for Group D here. And the final game of the round of 24. I am Maynard, with me is Todd. And we got ourselves a really, really awesome PVZ here to close things out. The German Showtime going against Dark, who has already gone through as one of the top three players. Yeah, sadly for Showtime, the qualification is out of the question there with his current score. But uh, Dark and Gumiho still playing for that higher seeding, which I was looking at uh, the players that advance. If they had a look themselves to try and figure out whether it's better to finish second or third, it's actually quite hard. Um, Whoever takes third in this group will face either Zest or Stats or Rion. That's pretty hard. Whoever takes second would face Nurcio, TY or Solar. So basically, death or death. <laughs> well, <laughs> a, a pretty tough matchup for either. So I think they're just going to obviously they're competitive guys. And uh, Dark is going to be trying to win here, I think, regardless of anything. And so will Showtime. Absolutely. So, seeding very, very important here as they go forward. I mean, yes, it's going to be tough no matter who they get, but it is still worth playing for that highest seed as we go into map number one here for our final best of three of the day on Newkirk Precinct. And we'll see if the German Protoss Showtime can cause an upset here against Dark. I mean, most people are going to be looking at this and go, hey, Dark's going to 2-0 here. But, uh, you know, there's been a bit of magic here. And there's been a bit of magic in the air here at uh, Katowice. There's been some upsets, been some craziness. Won't call it early. In the bottom right here, this is the man in question. This is Dark. And in the bottom left, from Germany, this is Showtime. Playing for the Reborn Team Armor Team. Showtime had a very impressive run, actually, in the qualifiers. Uh, he beat Serral, Classic, and Nurcio without dropping a single map against all of them. Sadly for him, didn't transcribe that performance here uh, with a qualification for the round of 12. But he finally gets to showcase his PVZ, which he's known for. Yeah, absolutely. That's he ha hasn't had a shot at it yet. Dark is the, uh, the Zerg representative here in Group D. And it's a rematch of the BlizzCon quarterfinals, which back then was uh, quite one-sided. Oh, it was the group stage, sorry. Yeah, that's right, the uh, this, the Burbank games. So on the right here, we do have Dark expanding, looking pretty natural for him. And Showtime doing the same thing. So early stages, PBZ, not a whole lot to talk about unless someone does something insane. What's Showtime's general uh, game plan in PBZ? What have you seen him do recently? I think he adapts quite a bit. He can play almost anything. Uh, it really depends. Like when he... What was one of my favorite rivalries and uh, series that we see a lot of the time is uh, Showtime against Nurcio. And it really goes to showcase how good Showtime is with every single Protoss unit and how good he is at adapting. Because when they, whenever this matchup happens, he knows that if he faces Lurker, Nurcio is just so good with him. So he goes into Disruptor and makes it look super convincing. Whereas now against Dark, I don't know if he's going to be into this mindset where he has to be doing something drastic himself. Uh, he might just be playing, you know, like the usual Showtime, you know, who takes the third base. Just opening, I would say, DT drop, something like that would be very, very solid. Or even target play into a third base and then just make sure you scout enough and know what the opponent's doing. If you are as good as Showtime, there really isn't too much you should be scared of. It's basically, in this kind of series, it, it really comes down to whoever's playing better every single time. Like, you, there is not that much surprise effect, I feel, between these two. You're not going to be trying to cheese the opponent or really surprise him. They're both pretty happy, I think, with scouting the opponent and then find out who has better mechanics and reactions to everything. Yeah, absolutely. And we do know that Showtime actually does quite like uh, Phoenix Adept. It's a unit composition that he's very, very fond of. Um, third, going down here for Dark, Showtime, Stargate about to finish here. We'll see if he opens straight in the Phoenix or if he goes Oracle first. Dark actually taking his third base on the right hand side instead of just a little bit above his main and natural. So he, he might just not want to be uh, harassed a little bit earlier than he would be otherwise if he takes that right hand side base. So far it's just going to be an Oracle into two additional gateways, no sign of a Twilight Council. And okay, this is going to shade out. Wouldn't be surprised if Showtime just made a couple of depths behind this, followed up the Oracle with, say, like a second one, and then maybe a few adepts going forward to try and kill some drones, and then 
you will basically almost every single time see a third base from a Protoss in this position here. Yeah, and he is Chrono Boosting those gateways, so he can get those Adepts out pretty quickly, not worrying about the Nexus. There's the Chrono Boost going down the Stargate instead. He's going to go double Oracle here. One is already out, heading towards Dark right now. And double Oracle, very, very good at shredding apart mineral lines. Zerglings as well. So they are coming in here to see what he can get done. Dark has a small crawler, but it's on the left here. So a little bit of an opening for the Oracle to get some damage. Only single drone kills so far. Look at Showtime's camera. What, what, what does it make you think of? I was talking about this with Autosis earlier, and he told me like he looks like he's piloting a spaceship somewhere. He actually has... He sits so straight. The most insane posture, yeah. I mean, insane is in good. It's a really, really good posture. I wish I, I, wish I wasn't shaped yeah, like I the letter C. I can't do that. Like, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm slouching right now. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, we're both slouching a little bit here. <laughs> let, let me sit straight. For no, but if you sit straight, I have to readjust my chair because all of a sudden you're really tall again. <laughs> Adepts coming forward. The double oracles there as well. Voidray will follow this up to maybe snipe the overlords around this base. And Showtime will actually shade out of there, maybe try and get one drone yeah. before. Nope, just gets a link. Would have been very surprised if he cancelled that shade and went into the drone line. That's one of the first Zergs that really showed us how good those banelings, uh, this very baneling heavy style with baneling drops can be. I don't think Showtime has taken that much information yet, but he saw the amount of Zerglings. He might be able to tell already kind of what's happening. He's going for a forge right now. Almost loses one of the Oracles. He's going to have to be careful here with that. Yeah. Very, very close. One more Queen Spit and that Oracle definitely would have died. Did Dark get... I don't think Dark got pneumatized Carapace, so Overlord Speed's something that he really, really, really loves in ZVP normally, but I suppose his Zergling actually managed to scout the take of Showtime anyway, so yeah. he doesn't exactly need it. You don't have to rush it, especially when you're able to get a, yeah. an early, an early on scout. Many drones for Dark. He's made nothing but drones for a while here. His economy is looking very healthy. He's going to be uh, nearly at 60, 60 workers already at this stage of the game. Yeah, I mean, he made the spores and got the queens against the oracles and got enough links, I think, on the ground to deal with uh, the amount of adepts. But uh, Sh Showtime nicely finds a little bit of a hole in the defense here of Dark, gets five drones. That's a nice little win. Like, if you look at the Walker count, I think Showtime's doing really well here in this game. He's actually going to go for a charge there. Mm. Quite unusual. Yeah, might just be going for here. timing. Yeah, I think you might be right. Uh, Adepts is generally what you see here. But uh, I think you're I think you're absolutely right, Todd. Uh, hitting a timing with this makes sense, with plus one and also maybe a couple yeah. Archons. Like, Zealot Archon is an old unit composition that used to do quite well. What basic Zerg tech is charge loss bad against roaches. What building did you not see? A Rotron. So Pig's favorite unit, not going to be fe featured yet uh, in this game so far, and I think Showtime fully realized that. He's like, you know what, just going to go charge. He's going to be good against Hydralisks, against Zerglings. It Lose can be against Banelings if you split well enough. Yeah, very true. And if he decides to go for Archon, obviously the Archon's very good against Banelings and Lings as well. And uh, do see Storm actually going down here very, very quickly, and High Templar starting to be warped in for Showtime. Harstem has been actually playing with uh, Storm a lot in his PVZs and he's looked fantastic. There was a... Uh, remember that game where he just like stormed all over the army of Sorto? Yeah, that was Kill everything. Uh, yeah, I apparently... Saw, I saw Zerglings evaporate for the first time. They went from green You loved it, didn't you? Hmm? I did you love it, yes. Not as fast as a Widow Mine, but still pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> nice, to see wid nice to see Zerglings disappear. No, I'm just but we do see that Showtime has his Warp Prism and he's going to get in here for a little bit of harassment. See how much he can get done. Hyde doesn't look like he's going to get too much. Hyde is already in position. Spore and Queen. It's a lot of anti-Warp Prism here. Walker comes actually even. Like Dark is going to pull a little bit ahead because he made a couple more drones with one more round. Cannons going down everywhere. Showtime fully knows that he's going to be on the threat of Baning Drops. Usually he's pretty clean with his defense. Showtime is the, that one guy that always will react pretty quick. Make sure he pulls back the probe. He's actually going to lose the Oracle here after using one Revelation. That was his last Oracle, too. It's going to make it harder for Showtime to go forward eventually to maybe step on creep and uh, engage into his opponent. Hydralisks and Banelings are pretty hard to it. I mean, anything with Banelings, even if they it's like a bunch of Ravagers. This is very nice for Showtime, actually. The Hydralisk left the mineral line here, giving him an opening to get a few drones, and he can actually easily get out of here as well. So, nice little move there from Showtime, shaving into the economy of Dark, which is so healthy. Very even in work account again. Um, Dark is still powering on the drones. He hasn't really, like, e every single round of lava, he's donated a good chunk of, like, a good percentage of that lava into drones. He's been droning pretty heavily. I think here. Dark's just going to go for it. Look at the amount of bailings that are being morphed here, Maynard. 
Storms are gonna be the deadly threat for him, but Showtime is a little bit behind in army supply. Oh, big He's Storm there, actually getting a lot of bailings. Overcharges are gonna be available wow. though. This could be a really bad attack from Dark, but if he blows the probes, maybe it could be good. These force fields doing really, really well against the Banelings. The Archon's soaking up a lot of damage on the Lings. Oh, the probes stacking up there, but no more Banelings to finish them off. Really nice storms from Showtime, keeping his third alive, but there is still a lot more Zerg left off. More beautiful storms from Showtime, taking all of the damage on these Hydralis, and he's just gonna shred this attack of Dark. Yeah, he defends uh, quite convincingly. Dark, though, Look at this. He, he's gonna, he might keep on going. He's getting a ton of units behind this. That's going to take forever. <laughs> Cleaning that up. And actually, we have an infestation pit starting now. Yeah, the, oh, there's a death. I don't think this one's going to be able to hold the door. No, I don't think so. Good night, sweet adept. And uh, these lings are going to start shredding through the space. The zealots will stymie the flow a little bit. Some lings here of Dark looking for any kind of opening. We know Dark loves his ling run buys. will do them all game long. Roll Bane lings into your third while you're not looking. And he's doing a nice little harassment here, actually killing a lot of probes now. Didn't expect him to get this many. Infestation pit on the, w on the way, nearly finished. So even just straight Infester, really, really good at this point in the game. Can lock things down, but he's going to yeah. opt for going for, str for straight for Hive. Against High Templars, I don't think it would be a good idea. I think probably just go for Ultras, maybe some Viper. Might be better and more upgrades as well because he's got plus two uh, melee attacks, even getting the plus three adrenal glands. Dark is playing very, very zergling and baning heavy, remember? Yeah. But like if there is a low immortal count, which I mean, Showtime is making them two uh, by two right now, going for ultras could actually be good. Absolutely. And Archons, uh, sorry, Immortals coming out two by two. Gonna be pretty tough if they get up in number for the ultras player, but it's. Uh, Turned out pretty well in the past. We have plus three on the way now for the Protoss army. The Zerg will need to catch up on tier three. Here's the problem for Showtime. He hasn't been able to properly be aggressive, like move across the map and make something happen. And because of that, the creep spread has progressed tremendously here for Dark. So he's finally going to start on pushing this back. But then he's, if he steps on creep, he's actually going to be exposed to eventually get engaged into, which is very, very scary there. But Showtime with a huge army lead here. Dark might be overextending here by attacking to him. Immortals not being split that much, but a lot of high Templars with the, so many storms are available yeah. behind this. Showtime with the Curing Stank actually going for the attack here. He is. He wants to keep this War Prism alive. Storms, actually, the Hydra's eating a lot of storms there, and the Immortals leading the charge, tanking a lot of those shots. The army supply of Showtime shooting ahead of Dark here. Dark is trying to remac with the Zerglings and the Banelings, but plus three. Nearly done here for Showtime. Another storm going down. Those Banelings connecting very nicely. The Archons and the Immortals leading the charge still with a Zealot. Banelings coming in from the top. Big storms from Showtime, though, shredding those Banelings apart. Does he have enough left to be able to press the issue? The Hydras are pulling back at Showtime, pulling ahead with the army supply. The Satchery's in big trouble, and Dark is actually poised to lose game number one here. He's evacuating the third hatchery. Showtime. Busting on through here, the Evo Chamber with the upgrade plus two characters taken out as wow. well, completely denied. Enjoy your Archons, Dark. There is not much <laughs> he can do here as he has to pull back. Just not enough forces. He needs a ton of Banelings to actually hold this. And Showtime is just going to keep on going for this. And he's looking great here in game number one against Dark. Yeah, it's fantastic at this point. Dark, this is his last ditch attack. His last chance to stop this army of Showtime. Will it happen? Will it be enough? Oh, the army of Showtime is getting quite softened and bruised here. One, um, one Archon still alive. Reinforcements with a couple of Archons coming in from the back. That Archon at the front does go down. But with this warp ins from the prison, it's looking like Showtime might be able to break the back of the Korean Zerg here for game one. He's heading into the natural, Todd. If he could just stand in that position, that's where all the units are going into the same direction. Just a big warp in here might do it, but the warp prism is going to be very exposed. GG. Well played, Showtime gets game one against Dark. Very, very nice. He oh, is, man. yeah, you know, people talk about how good his PVZ is and for good reason. That was a, that was a masterclass. Very, very justified for sure here. Dark didn't know what hit him here with this counter attack. Yeah, I think he probably was gonna gear up for another attack himself here he, eventually, even though he was going for Hive. Mm. He was confident with his Hydralisk, with his uh, Banelings. Stylistically, I really think that what Showtime did is what counters this style, because you go for Storm, Banelings and Hydralisks are so squishy, especially if you're going for uh, Charge Lots in support. Remember, there is no Roaches, you can't, there is no kiting potential, really. You have to move in there as the Zerg player, you have to engage 
And by the time those bailings reach the Protoss army, you will be uh, able to already have splits. You will be able to storm on top of a lot of those bailings. So Dark definitely overextended with a huge attack towards the third base uh, of Showtime, I think. Even though the run by did a little bit on the fourth, it just wasn't enough. Indeed. And Shark, uh, sorry, Dark looking a little bit exasperated there. Shark. <laughs> Maybe that's a... Sharking around. Yeah, that's right. It's a little bit of a Freudian slip there. And we got uh, Showtime. Looking pretty relaxed, pretty composed, but starting to get tired as well. It's been a very long day here for the last stage of round of 24. Unfortunately, is going to be going through this group, but again, we are playing for seeding, playing for seeding here, so this match is still very important. See where Dark ends up along with Innovation and Gumiho from Group D. We've got 10 Koreans going through overall, two foreigners in Serral and Nurtio. Let's introduce the players in the top right here of Proxima Station. This is Dark! And in the bottom left, winning game one from Germany, this is Showtime! Passion Lords in the crowd there, getting behind Showtime here for the series. Lovely crowd, love you guys. Love Thank you guys. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. All right, Showtime, going for the early wall off here, no surprise on Proxima Station, pretty easy one to get. You got that uh, kind of free expansion, pocket expansion you can go into that everybody likes to go into and uh, this time we'll see if he actually uh, opens differently or if he's still again going to be a stargate remember last game we saw a couple oracles being made going to be a, a block here actually because most zergs they would take that uh, out of base as natural because then you can start crisp spreading already you're going to be under less threat from any kind of attacks later on yeah i mean you know you don't have to worry about holding this ramp you got a nice uh, uh you have an easier choke to hold there. And like you said, the crease spread, very, very important for defenses. Showtime. Definitely uh, could see him here. Mixing a very different build. He's one, he's one of those Protosses that's just so complete. Like, he's very, very well-rounded. He can play any build. And from from map to map, usually, will bounce around between his build orders. He's got a huge repertoire. So maybe a Twilight Council here over, uh, instead of the target that we saw last game to open with might be nice. Mm. Is Showtime one of those Protosses that likes to go for the Prism drop, like the Archon drop play? I think he can do it sometimes, but... I don't think I've seen it. From, yeah, uh, usually, time. though, he's, he just varies. Like, he really feels like he, he doesn't have a one preference compared to most other players, and that's what also makes him so good, is that he just has so many build orders, and he can do them so well. It's actually going to be a Stargate here once again, so... Okay. Showtime really feeling that stock. I mean, he did pretty well with it last game. He, he eventually lost the Oracles, but that kind of done their job. He killed quite a few drones, used Revelation early on on these Hydralisks. Absolutely. See if he goes for, Doracle, uh, for double Oracle or for single Oracle here. If he changes it up at any point here, we'll, we'll be able to, you guys know straight away. The Adept shedding across here, trying to save that probe, and it looks like it will live for now. Getting ready to be in Heroes of the Storm later. <laughs> We got this. Be so happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm all about pleasing you, Claris. We have pneumatized carapace coming out here, and this is the Dark we know and love. Getting that Overlord speed yeah. so that he can get a good scout off of the Protoss tech. I think last game Dark realized very late uh, what exactly was happening from Showtime's side. So maybe this time he wants to keep on top of his scouting so that he can actually adjust. Because I do think that when you spot charge lots and high templars and storm being researched early on, you can adjust yourself. You can either turtle a little bit more or go into roaches, just go into a different kind of composition. You don't have to commit to what you open into, but because Dark didn't know, he, he probably felt committed. He wanted to go for that one attack, see if he could walk out. Well, too bad. You met uh, the previous Master Shaft who was ready for the hold and got it. <laughs> Showtime's defense is actually insane. Like, I've seen so many games, like on three bases, two bases, whatever you throw at him, yeah. Very, very ra rarely works, uh, I think, from these Zergs. Showtime is pretty damn good. He is a WCS champion, of course, as well. Just to win, uh, win tours, right? Yeah. Beating only Zergs, actually. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was Nurture so sick. The grand final. Yeah, that was so, actually, that was the 
the and best that series. Maybe we went all the way to Game Seven. That was a really sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were really blessed with some great series this last year. This year, only starting just the early stages of March. Plenty more tournaments. Plenty more WCS tournaments. Korean tournaments on the way. We got uh, Evo Chamber for Dark going out of the back. This might be some Drop Lord play. That'd be a little bit interesting. Showtime getting that uh, that Void Ray out though is going to be pretty nice for clearing up these Overlords. Double Oracle is going to be on the play here. Is on the plate for Showtime. He's coming in. He's taking a lot of damage on these Oracles, so doesn't want to overextend. He's going to drop the Revelation and leave. Speaking of WCS, lots of events to come this year. It's been announced. We're going to go to Spain. Canada. Yep. All over the place, man. And we have regional challenges as well. Uh, SSL is back as well in Korea and the other side of the world. GSL's uh, Season 1 semifinals are in two weeks. Next WCS event is going to be WCS Austin late April. It's not far away at all. In fact, I think uh, Challenger begins early April. All right, let's see. Baning Nest plus one melee. On the other side, we've got Robo, Forge, and Twilight. Everything. Is going according to plan for both players. They're just sitting on their, their normal tech that they, they usually go into. I want to see if Dark makes any adjustment from the previous game. You know, I talked about being able to adjust. So far, it looks extremely similar. So maybe, I think a good thing he could do here, maybe in this game, is just play more passive because last game, just Showtime was completely ready. And as much as he made the right counter to Dark's army, if Dark had, hadn't actually attacked, kept on expanding, kept on teching, it would have been harder for Showtime, I think, to step on creep and take a proper fight. But we see additional gateways here being added on for uh, for the German portals here right now. Yeah, we do. So he's second like robo as well. Uh, Maybe wow. a big push here incoming. Yeah, could go for a double immortal and uh, really hammer in those units. Okay, he looks the same actually. He goes for charge. Okay. And there's the Templar Archives. Okay, so similar t similar uh, unit composition for last game, but hold that thought. We got Infestation Pit pretty quickly here from Dark. And second Evo this time around. So, Carapace, gaining speed on the way as well. Showtime is so sick with these Oracles, by the way. I would have lost these, like, basically from the start. Well, he might still lose this one on the left. Oh! Yeah, he does get it. Oh, my God. I did this. <laughs> yeah. Cast oh, curve. no! It's the double Templar Archives! Oh, double Templar Archives. Don't do it. We've seen a lot of double tech structures at this tournament. No chairs done it a couple times. I think I saw a triple twilight from someone. <laughs> <laughs> what a world that we went wrong. Do you know what? What's sick? If he drops zerglings and snipes the Temple Archive, there's still another one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, he managed to realize what he was doing and cancel it. I think. So, high Templars coming out and Storm is on the way. Charge as well. So, yeah, same unit composition as last game. But Dark's going for a really quick high for you. Ooh, this is cute towards that Void Ray there. And like I said before, Showtime, almost every single time you go for this, he reacts on time and pulls back his walkers. But if he doesn't just one time, that's going to be a little of dead. So let's Bane see here. Rain. Showtime reacting immediately, though. Yeah, it's coming in towards the main base. The Void Ray is shooting at the Overlord that was there. I don't know if he killed it on time. OK, one Veiling will make it nah, down. But got it. Not a problem. That's that German efficiency, man. Sick defense. Whoa. Just lose a couple of Zealot. Nice. Good defense here for Showtime, but that fourth base is going to have to be cancelled. I don't think he should mind too much. 65 probes to uh, 69 drones. He's definitely doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, delaying the fourth kind of stings a little bit, but oh, considering how well the defense was. Revealing the hive as it's about to finish, he's basically going to be able to time perfectly when, you know, Ultra, some sort of greater spire comes. Against a Protoss who's massing Immortals, he's very hard to go Ultras. So I don't blame Dark for going Great Aspire, but against someone as good as Showtime, if he's able to realize what's happening, he will attack you before. And then that's what Dark might be counting on. Go into a ton of Banings and fight on Creep. Because the Creep's actually quite far out right now. He's in the middle of the map and hasn't been denied at all. Yeah, Showtime hasn't moved across the map really until right now. This Archon, uh, you know, good amount of high, st of high Templars with Storm here. Uh, Prism... Does he have a prison with this army? No. Yeah, he's coming. He's making it now. He needs that. Oh, actually, no, he already has one out, so he's getting a second one. The Roddy back up prison. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. You lose your first prison, and then you just have another one ready. That's the plan. The opponent just, like, throws away his army to kill the prison. <laughs> You're like, shout out to Roddy. <laughs> Plus two about to finish as well. But we've got a lot of... Uh, Doc is doing a great job with his Oglings run by, by the way. He's buying himself quite a bit of time here. 
I don't think Showtime quite wanted to rush. Oh, yeah, that's actually, a kill, no, no cancel. Hmm. Big Adrenal there for Dark. Adrenal Cancel on the way as well. Like ideally, Showtime's timing will come very soon. If he doesn't hit it, then it's gonna be hard against potential Brutalors. Oh, a lot of storms to get rid of those banelings there. Did soften up the Protoss army a little bit. Attacking into spines like this is very hard. Maybe you can fake the attack, pull back at the last second. Oh, actually, oh, oh. the Banelings, but Dark Rolls in there with just a couple of Banelings. Oh, oh! Bane Rain from above here. Oh, the High Templar all died to the Banelings. A huge, a, a huge move there from Dark. And all the punch, the splash damage of the Protoss army suddenly gone in an instant. And Dark crushes wow. him. GG. Showtime. Up. He must have thought that Dark was bluffing, or I don't know. I didn't realize there was an Overlord headed for him. It's it's an unusual sight. It's not every day that you get to play against Zerg that do banning drops and that actually banning drop on top of your army. That was sick here by Dark. That literally just that one single move handily won him the game. Without that, there was quite a few item plus with, uh, I think, at least one storm each there. Yeah, they Showtime might have, might, might have actually won the fight. They definitely had a storm each, so there's a huge pickoff. High gas units, all of Showtime splash damage. I mean, the. Uh, the Archons do have splash damage, but it's very small. What he really wanted was those storms to blanket the Zerglings and the Banelings especially. Also, I think he was a little bit too early uh, to attack for Showtime there. He could have waited to have a little bit more. Uh, there was, like, I mean, no Blue Lords were near. There weren't even a single Corruptor. So that's what Zergs do nowadays, by the way. It's kind of like Serral. Have you seen how Serral plays against Protoss? He gets plus two melee attacks. He gets Zerglings and Banelings, sometimes with Ravager and supports. And he makes a Spire. If you, if you don't attack him, he's going to get some mutas and really annoy you. Fly from base to base, wreck your economy, be cost effective, keep you in your base while he keeps on expanding. If you attack him, Banelings are going to blow up everything. So it's, I mean, you've got a choice. Basically, you die or, do, or you die. And it's, it was kind of the same thing there. That's how you play Zerg nowadays. And really well done by Zark. We're going to get into the next map here on game number three. Our final map for the day, in the bottom right here of Cactus Valley, winning the second game with a beautiful Bane Rain maneuver. This is Dark. And the bottom left from Germany, winning game one. Will he win game three? This is Showtime. Tobias. Tobias Seaver. He was doing a lot of good things last game, but really that those big attacks. He didn't even actually split that much, I think even... He, uh, to be honest, it's even a little bit surreal because he moved forward and then a couple bailings were sent towards him. And whenever you see that as Protoss, you always go like, well, this is supposed to be bad, right? But you, you have like a deer in a headlights moment where you kind of freeze, <laughs> you're like, is this for real? And then you just kind of look at your army dying to, to bailings just because you can't believe the, the opponent actually did that. So it's. It's a bit of a weird moment, and I feel like this is what might have happened to Showtime, who didn't maybe uh, split as much as he could have. Or maybe I'm overreading it, and Dark just was counting on Showtime not to be looking at his army at the time. In which case, I mean, it's hard to split if you're not looking at it, if you're making pylons at home or even producing out of the war prison. Yeah, that's a bit awkward. I mean, the, the Overlords had speed, and Showtime's anti-air was pretty much a Void Ray in some Archons, I think, so it's, you know a pretty good gamble to be able to send that Overlord in yeah. he's going to get damage done. And he picked the exact right spot to drop those Banelings and paid off very, very well for him. It's, it's history in the books. And now Showtime going for a little bit of a different opening. I think he's going for a uh, double gateway. So these will be with the depths in the site when the uh, Cybernetic score finishes. There it is. Double Adept. Yeah. I wonder how aggressive actually Showtime wants to be with this. When... Uh for a long time, when you would see uh, some very early Nexus and two gateways, it would be for some Adept harassment into double Stargates, which can be very good, I think, on this map. Now, because of the position, it might be a little bit trickier. Showtime scouted everything, though. So, I mean, the choice here is entirely up to him in terms of what he thinks counter, what he saw with uh, the quick third base here from Dark and uh, the speed that's already on the way as well. Single Zergling of Dark just missing the two Adepts here of Showtime since like Dark's found his opponent just yet. There he goes, just sees the natural of Showtime getting dropped right now. Just finishing up. Two Adepts hitting into the natural of Dark, shading into the main while looking for some drones. 
may get one here, maybe two. Yeah, I know oh, he was going to cancel say. there. Yeah. Five juicy drones who are just standing there, and he's actually going to get quite a few kills. Wow, that's really, really nice, actually. At this time, maybe let's that shade forward. Oh, I there's another thing, so I think yeah. he's going to cancel. But he's still, got five drones for two adepts, like not even losing a single adept. Really nice start for Showtime. But still, very good for sure. But still. Uh, Twilight Council behind this Robo going to be added on, so maybe just Resonating Glaives, War Prism, some Immortals, some sort of attack, continuous attacks. You can really snowball out of this, that's the thing. You can sit back if you want and boost your economy, but you can also be very aggressive. Oh, I love this. He actually shades wow. out of there. I actually think with his Adept count, it kind of uh, behooves him to go for re Resonating Glaives here and drop some more gateways. Yeah. Try and keep this pressure on, on Dark, for sure. Lots of links were made by Dark. He clearly overreacted. 31 probes to 20 drones, and Showtime is actually going to go for a Dark Shrine. Oh, he was going to make it. Ah, he hit it. He <laughs> saw that. He was going to make it as well. He's like, nope. Oh, actually not. Oh, if he does not see this coming, this could mean trouble. Mothership Core was Oh, Showtime. Hit. He's here to catch it. Oh, no. Oh, the legs don't. Oh. oh, plug the hole. Hold the door. Hold the door. Oh, the links are in. This is devastating for Showtime with such a great start in this game. Oh, not being in the right position at the right time, and all of a sudden, speedlings are the natural, and that's almost all she wrote already. Yeah, Mothership Core is down the way. He's going to try to hold on. He's going to try to stay in this game. Dark Shrine is now revealed. Dark is going all in with this. He's getting a ton of links. Well, actually, he has a better economy now already than Showtime, who's going to have to pull probes and lose even oh, more of them. And what a way to go, Todd. Showtime taking critical economical damage here. There's not a whole lot you can do from this point. GG. And Dark, just with one swift, one swift maneuver, executes Showtime. Gets himself a 2-1 victory in the series. Strong start in the series for the German player. He looked really, really, really comfortable in PvZ. But Dark dismantling him with some pretty tricky play in game two and three. If you make one single mistake like this against one of the world's best Zerg, this is what's going to happen pretty much every single time. And uh, it's no different this time around. Really well played. And Dark definitely earning his spot in the top three of Group D. One of the four Zergs to make it to the top 12 with uh, Nurcio, Serol, and Solar. That's right. So, guys, hope you enjoyed the commentary today. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to have an interview with Dark on stage with Smix, and then close out the show with the guys on the desk. Do not go away. See you soon.